Hi everyone, uh, welcome to the first episode of the Amazon Developer Podcast. Uh, my name is Mario Viviani and I'm the tech evangelist uh, here at Amazon uh, and I'm very happy to be here with my friend Quang. Hey, yeah, thanks for having us. It's great to be here. Brilliant. Thank you very much for being here. Really, really appreciate. So uh, maybe uh, can you introduce yourself and tell our friends uh, what, what you do and what you focus on? Sure. Um, so my name is Quang, as, as, as Mario said, and um, I'm a spare time indie developer. I have a day job, but in my spare time, I make video games. Brilliant. And um, you work for uh, Zobitech, right? That, that is your, uh, your company, your founder, and you work with yeah. your brother. So can you tell us more about Zobitech and what you do there? Yeah, so Zobitech is the company I, I put together oh, 11 years ago now. Wow. wow it's, yeah, it's been a long time. Uh, I used to work in game development before. Uh, I used to make games for the Game Boy Color. Um, and I left the industry and I came back. 11 years ago and it's been the last 11 years just re relearning catching up and getting to a point now where we can make games uh, yeah that that is impressive so yeah again uh, you've been working in the gaming industry now for for many years more than more than 11 years mm -hmm. and I, I think you probably seen this industry changing a lot yeah. right so uh, what, what are the, the things that like um, interest you right now and you're focusing your your attention on specifically yeah, for sure. Um, so we watched it change so much because um, technology moved forward so fast now, and uh, and re relearning it took us a long time to get to a point where we're comfortable with what we're, we're going to do. Uh, we're co looking at making mobile games primarily. Um, there are obviously PC and console. Um, it's something we're also thinking about, but primarily mobile for sure. Uh, mainly due to everyone having a mobile device, and the more people we can reach, the better. Brilliant. So, and, and talking specifically about mobile games, what what kind of games are you focusing on, and uh, and why why are you working on on specifically that kind of games? Sure. Um, so our experience is um, are mainly the arcade games from the eighties and nineties, uh, microcomputers, consoles, things like that. Um, so we make very fast arcadey, casual type games, things you can pick up and play for short periods of time. And so yeah, casual arcade games. That's brilliant. And is there a specific reason you guys focus on that kind of of um, game, or compared to you know the, there is su such a huge variety of games yeah. out there, and uh, it's, it's such a, a you know a various ecosystem uh, out there. So so what, why are you guys focusing on on that specifically? Oh yeah, for so for us definitely, um, it's it comes down to our experiences. Um, those are the games we spent most time with. Those are the uh, the things we played as as, as children growing up, uh, we did play bigger games, and, and but because we're a small team, just me and my brother, uh, development time uh, to make it as small as possible. We make fast, quick games. Brilliant. And um, uh, I know that you guys work with variety of technologies, but um, do you work with specific uh, pieces of technologies or game engines uh, hmm. when you create your games? So currently we're using Game Maker Studio as our primary engine. Uh, this is due to us making primarily 2D action games and we feel Game Maker Studio fitted that really, really well at the time. Yeah, that, that, that's brilliant. Do you, um, um, when, when you use uh, Game Maker Studio specifically, do you have any um, uh, specific ways of approaching the, the creation of the game in terms of um, the two uh, other tools that you're using, uh, something that would be useful uh, maybe for uh, to know uh, for people who's uh, just starting creating games uh, using these game engines. Is there uh, something that you, uh, let's say, that you use to kickstart your experience using uh, game engines specifically? Yeah, so for, I think for us, we were looking at uh, being cross-platform. Um, so being on mobile and being on, on, on computers and consoles as well. And we looked at what engine fitted the games we make uh, we made. Um, and we found that Game Maker Studio fitted that really, really well. Um, it also, due to my programming experience, um, Game Maker was a engine that fitted my uh, coding experiences as well. Really? So I, I find it very easy to code in that engine. Um, rather learning a new language. That's interesting. So uh, I know that a lot of um, developers are, are approaching uh, the the um, creation of um, of games because now it's 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 easier than ever. I would say to to start creating a new game. Mm. Uh, uh, if you have to think back, let's say ten years ago, what 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 are the main differences in starting the creation of a game now compared to to when you started? 
So yeah, ten years ago, if you think about then the pr prolificness of, of game engines wasn't really a thing. Uh, you would write a lot of things from scratch. So when I made stuff for the Game Boy, for example, uh, we wrote in C, an assembly language, um, and we also knew the platform as it was. It didn't change. Now we have so many multiple devices, different kinds, um, and all the engines help support this and make it make an, an easier process to make games for sure. That's that's interesting. So, um, would you say that the um, the change in the ecosystem of game engines, where for example, a lot of the new uh, newest game engines allow for features like drag and drop, mm. um, like I know that for example, both um, uh, Unity or or even Game Maker Studio introduce this mm. this feature. Do you think that this this feature kind of democratize the um, um, creation of games? Yeah, I, I think definitely now it's more imp the the. the the creation of the game is the more important part, rather than learning to code. Before you had to be a programmer first, before you could make games. Now you literally can drag and drop. I've seen some great stuff created with drag and drop on all the platforms. That's that's interesting. Uh, I know that also you're you're a big fan of like game jams, and uh, do you think that you know going back 10, 15 years would would game jam even be possible uh, at, at the same level that you're seeing it happening True. today? So again, back in the days, uh, old days you'd have demo parties, uh, where you'd create these little demos uh, with code, um, but creating a whole game in, in a short amount of time uh, wasn't really heard of. But now with the ease, the, 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 how easy it is to make a game uh, with the engine sets, you can do it in, in, a, in a day, in a weekend, or whatever. It's, it's, it's impressive stuff. That, that's brilliant. And um, so you said that one of the, the reasons, one of the big focus for you um, of using uh, these new game engines is the fact that it is easier to go cross um, cross platform. Mm. Um, so maybe let's start talking about uh, your specific experience uh, and, and the games that you're creating. What, what are the main platforms that you target? You said mobile, are there other platforms that you are uh, thinking about targeting for your next games, let's say? Yeah, so yeah, definitely we're going again with mobile purely because numbers. Uh, we want to reach as the biggest big audience as possible and mobile is the way to go for that for sure. Um, and then uh, it would be nice to see our games on the consoles and computers as well. I guess computers come, come in second with the fact that now everyone has a PC at home. Um, mobile is mainly because you can take it with you and you play a game wherever you are. Uh, computers, because everyone has a computer, and then consoles come up. Um, you know, it'll be nice to be on them, it's, but it's not our primary focus. Interesting. So, um, one one challenge a lot of developers are, are facing right now in uh, in the mobile ecosystem is that compared even to let's say eight nine years ago when when mobile was starting, mm. uh, now the ecosystem is is very crowded. So, for example, I yeah. think about our app store. We have more than seven hundred thousand uh, apps and games out there. So, uh, do you think that today is mobile still a viable option for for game developers? Um, yes, I, I definitely think so. Uh, but if you you know if you compare it to the computer market, uh, I feel things like Steam and computer uh, games on PC are more uh, saturated. So it's more important than ever to build a community and be visible, um, and that's how you get your game seen. Um, the number of apps isn't going to go any less. It's, right. it's going to only going to grow. Uh, with the ease of making games and uh, and and more and more people want to be part of that, you have to concentrate more and more on your community and and your visibility. That's that, that's a very very good advice. So, um, speaking of like building visibility for for your game, I know that you're you're very vocal and very present when when it comes to um, advertise your game even before the game itself is is released. Do you have yeah. any tips or suggestions for uh, game developers which are you know just approaching the release of their first game mm. uh, or they're still working on their game? Yeah. So with our game, Mamal Castle, uh, from day one we started showing events. So for the last two years or so, uh, we've been now to 56 events to show the game um, in two years. And this is purely for visibility stance. Uh, you want as many people to see the game as possible. You want the right people to see the, your game. Um, human interaction, face-to-face uh, -face interaction with people is way more powerful than sending out blanket emails. Um, like. Coming along to the Amazon meetups, um, I, get, I got to meet yourself, Mario. Rather than just dropping you a blank email, it means nothing. Right. So face-to-face -face interaction is probably one of the most important things you can do uh, to get your word out there. 
how how do you think uh, branding is important for uh, for for a uh, indie game developer, for example, I know that like uh, when, when it comes to branding or even the word marketing, sounds something mm. only uh, the the triple A studios can do. But um, um, what, what's your opinion on it? Oh, yeah, so so as an indie developer, you're usually a small team, one, two, uh, I don't know, maybe ten people at most. Um, branding is you. You are your own company. So your your face, your your personality comes through that, and you need to. Make yourself as visible as possible so people know who you are, who know your know knows who your company is and what you're making, um, and that's an extension of yourself. So by making yourself visible, you make your company and your games visible. That's that's brilliant. So um, maybe let's now. Uh, Take a step back and, and go back and talking about um, development, the creation mm. of, of games. So you said that you're you're very focused on on mobile. So um, uh, there, there there is a variety of, of devices out there. So even just if we're talking about Android devices out there, mm. we're talking about probably thousands of different sure. models. And and also there are tablets, like for example Amazon tablets mm -hmm. that you you have to to think about and and when, when you're creating the game. So um, when you're thinking. Talking specifically about mobile, do you have any suggestions about you know how to uh, even when you're starting creating both the graphical assets or even the the um, the the rooms of your games mm. and all that? Uh, how do you optimize for for mobile and, and even further maybe for a tab tablet yeah. kind of experience? So I, th I think for us, when we think about making games, we need to look at what platform you're targeting first and foremost. Um, and for us right now, it's mobile. So you need to look at, again, all the range of the devices, find out what the minimum device you can work on is and aim for that, because if it works well on that, it will work on anything above that. You you need the bottom level, make sure it works well there. Um, things you need to worry about, obviously, as a device, it's a touch screen. You don't have physical controls, you don't have a joypad or a keyboard or mouse, um, so your fingers uh, will be covering the screen at some point. Um, you wanna think about being an, as natural a process as possible, so swipes, taps, you know, gestures that way, rather than a D-pad and and buttons. Um, you need to fit the game and the experience around the device itself. So that really helps. That's interesting. What what about the fact that you know uh, not not all devices are created equal in terms mm. of. Uh, how much uh, compute power they have, uh, or dedicated GPUs. Um, so, how do you go about optimizing for a low-end device compared uh, to a device where you know that you have uh, a lot of gigabytes of, yeah. of RAM available or a lot of, of storage um, available? A lot of devices, again, uh, it, as we said, it's it's a crowded space. So, how do you yeah. make sure that um, customers can? install and enjoy your game even on, on uh, slightly lower end devices. Yeah. So what we've done is uh, we've gone out and got all the lower end devices, you know, spend some money on getting uh, a 50 pound tap five tablet or um, a low end phone and test your device, your games on those things. Uh, you need to be very aware of memory restrictions. So uh, some devices only have a, a megabyte of RAM. Um, so when you're doing graphical assets, be aware of how much you can load in. Uh, keep it as simple as possible. I come from a background of making games for the Game Boy, you know, Game Boy. So the, that's an 8-bit CPU with minimum memory in it. And so it's something that you need to be very aware of. Um, and optimization is something you need to work in from the ground up to optimize later on. It's a lot more difficult. But if you optimize from starting, um, make sure your routines are fast, and that helps in the long run for the more devices you want to run on. Uh, yeah, so, so when you're looking at mobile, it's something you need to be aware of constantly. Um, test regularly. Um, you know, my own personal device that I use day to day isn't a low end device. So testing on that means I don't have a real picture of how it works on a small uh, lower end device. Uh, we usually compile to HTML5 for right. testing. Uh, I know HTML5 as an engine is, is much slower than a native app. So I know if it runs well in HTML5, it will run even better as a native app. That's a really good advice. So uh, for, for testing, it's just a lot quick, very, very quick for us to do it that way. Uh, me and my brother, we don't work in the same location, so I can right. just push to HTML5, he can test it uh, through HTML5, and then if we all agree on things, great, and then we create an APK, and wow, it runs even better as APK. That's brilliant. So. Um, 
maybe an, an interesting thing when it, when it comes to tablets in particular mm. is that um, sometimes a lot of developers just reason in terms of resolution of the device and mm. don't think about the actual physical yeah. uh, shape of the device, which again, it might have a smaller resolution, but the, the, the physical space on the device is much bigger. So when it comes to the graphical assets um, or even the way that you display graphical assets on screen, um, what, what is your experience you know, focusing on a mobile device, which could be a, like a five inch or, or something device, mm. and tablets, which usually goes from seven inch up to 10 inch mm. devices. Do you have any suggestions there for uh, for developers? Oh, for sure. When you look at screen size, you need to physically hold the devices in your hand so you can see where uh, the elements are placed, realize where your hands are going to be placed uh, when you're touching things. Um, if you're working on I know, a small phone, like a four inch screen, uh, I don't know if people still have four inch screen devices anymore, but I think they do. <laughs> they, you need to be aware of if your controls are taking up a quarter of the screen, that's a lot of real screen real estate already gone, but it still needs to be readable. So if you're having subtitles in your game, for example, uh, if you're using a small eight pixel font, it's fine on a large screen, a TV, but on a small device, you won't be able to read it. So. You need to test. Testing is everything. You need to test, iterate, test, iterate, and go through that process. That's brilliant. So, um, speaking of um, Amazon devices specifically, hmm. I know I know that you um, uh, working on Mau Mau Castle. I've uh, been using uh, Amazon devices quite a lot, both to develop the game and even to showcase the game. Hmm. Um, well, what is your experience working with Amazon Fire tablets? Yeah, so uh, we test on the Amazon uh, Fire Seven. Uh, we know that's the lowest uh, device um, that Amazon uh, produces and we know if it works well on the Amazon 7 it will work on the other ones as well and you know, we also test on the other ones to make sure it works well as well. Uh, showcasing using the 7 inch tablets means that people can see oh um, my kids have this tablet it will work on that. Um, I know there has been experiences where people have gone out to get the latest games and then realized their kid has a it's low end device and it right. will run well and it, it's, it's tears for everybody because like hey I've got the game but it doesn't work very well because it hasn't been tested on a low end device so for us to reach as many people as possible we have to make sure it runs on all devices. Brilliant. And uh, in order to you know let's let's close on a uh, on a high end just teasing mm -hmm. a little bit so I know that you um, you've been working for a while now on uh, Mau Mau Castle mm -hmm. um, do you, can you share something about uh, how is it going and sure. you know th some things that maybe you're working on if you want to share them uh, and what are your plans for the immediate future if you can mm. so yeah Mau Mau Castle development now has been two years four months as of recording this podcast. Um, it's a slower process than I would hope, uh, mainly because this is our spare time thing. We have day jobs as well uh, to, to fund the whole thing, but um, and we make the game, work on the game whenever we have time. Uh, so it's been a bit longer than we'd anticipated, um, but we're looking to release soon. Um, we're now aiming for somewhere in the first quarter of, um, of next year. Uh, we're looking to integrate uh, Amazon's Game On API. Um, this is mainly to help look after our leaderboards. We feel one of the most important things of a mobile game is the social aspect. Um, playing games on your own device uh, was always a very solitary experience, but if you can share that with other people, it makes it that much more powerful. You know, back in... Um, if you can share your high scores with other people uh, and, and com compete with other people, uh, it drives you to play the game more, it drives you to want to compete. You know, um, just having the ability to uh, have different cosmetic changes, they're great, but they mean nothing if you can't show someone. So being visible, so we're gonna have different uh, skins for our game, our cats and game in the game, and your high score will show you which skin you had used. So then people can see who at the top and which skins they're using. That's very cool. So we make it very very visible and build a community from there. Nice. So that's a very exciting time. That's very cool, Kwang. So uh, thank you very much for being here. Uh, hopefully uh, you'll come back for maybe another um, podcast very soon. Really appreciate you being here. Uh, thanks for watching and listening. Uh, and uh, see you in the next episode of the Amazon Developer Podcast.